Yeah, sounded like it. I'm sorry. That's okay, but if you can follow through with that promise, I'm sure. I will, and that's a promise. Now, I that's challenge Jeannie Sparks, and I challenge Joe Santano, go on record. Will you give yourselves a voluntary 10% pay cut? I want all five supervisors to cut their own pay by 10%, no, 5% a, a year. That's an absurd thought. They don't do that. It goes no, the they, other way. It's always a hike. Yeah, they're, they're always raise. raising it. Yeah. But if you're like William Wagner, you don't believe I'm running for county supervisor. <laughs> Look at your sample ballot if you live in the city of Santa Maria. I'm running for county supervisor, 5th district. And that's a promise I will keep. I will vote for that. I will bring the issue up. And every meeting, I'll bring it up again until they get so tired that they'll mm -hmm. just schedule a time to bring it up, and I'll embarrass them with their own greed. None of these people, they, they don't work that many hours that they should get paid that much. I'm telling you, I followed Joni Gray around one day. She did <laughs> not put in a full 40-hour week. And I, did you? Uh, yeah, I followed Tom Urbanski. To be fair, I followed Tom Urbanski and Gail Marshall. And I'm not going to tell you which one actually put the less, least amount of time in. I shouldn't have even told anybody this, but I did. I followed all three. I tried to follow, follow Miss uh, Susan. Not you, the Susan supervisor. Uh -huh. Couldn't follow that woman. She Man, was speeding? Oh. No. I'm not telling you why, but I couldn't follow that woman. But I did oh. a year a year ago. I spent two full days just tracking these people. And I'm telling you, they're not putting in a 40-hour week to get, to get that outrageous salary they paid. So you elect mm. me, and you're going to save... 10% right off the supervisor's salary, but it's up to you. Now, I'm waiting to see Jeannie Sparks' reply and Joe Santana's reply. Hello, it's up to you guys. I'm waiting for your response on that one. Okay, we covered that, didn't we? we covered pretty that pretty much. good. Well, now, barely touched here's on it, something. But. Here's something. I think we got what? We got uh, 30 minutes left? 10 minutes left. Oh, my goodness. 10 minutes left. Delayed family law report due next month. A long delayed report examining Marin's County Family Law Court prompted by charges of cronyism and inattention to the welfare of children is now expected late next month. But an administrator with Marin County Supervisor Court expressed consternation about the delays in the report's release. Quote, and I'm quoting, and I'll mm -hmm. let you quote it. We'd love to see it, but by the time we finally get it, I wonder what its value will be at that point. Said, said. Karen Richardson, Assistant Court Administrative mm. Officer. So where is this at? This Did you hear about the judge that was forcing women to have sex down there in L.A.? You did tell me about that, yeah. Yeah, well, it's in the newspapers. If those of you that don't read the L.A. newspapers, you missed a great one. But there is so much corruption in the court system uh, and I'm not speaking about specifically about our judges locally here. Although we did have a Superior Court judge elected. He was County DA, North County DA, mm -hmm. Assistant DA of Santa Barbara County, got elected to Superior Court, and he was doing cocaine. Hello? Or was it heroin? I forget. He finally turned himself in because guess what? All the sheriff's deputies, all the bailiffs, his bailiff was, knew he was doing it, none of them would blow the whistle on him. They probably supplied it. No. I don't know. I asked him who supplied, I and know. I don't think he told me the truth. He's back yeah. in. A, he's pra practicing attorney. He's a good attorney, mm -hmm. but I just think if he could do drugs, then anybody should be able to do drugs. If the superior well, court judge go. can go in his back chambers and snore it up, and then come back out and dish out the law, then I don't see why they should be arresting and putting people away for long sentences. That just to me that blows me away. I'm not encouraging you to do drugs. I think drugs are a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Even the drugs the doctors tell you you should take, oh, I think, are yeah. often a bad idea. And we see lots Probably. of lawsuits like the thalidom thalidomide babies. All those people with no arms and legs. Say that again? The oh, thalidomide. Yeah. Well, that's before your time. That was 1960s. Long time ago. 50s, All right. 60s, anyway, yeah. I like the Chumash people, even though there are no 100% Chumash people left. But Russell means... Russell Means, are we ready to go to that tape? Russell Means said something that is so true. You people aren't free. And Russell Means, if you don't know who he is, he's the guy at Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee, North Dakota, Sioux Indian. He's also an actor. He was the voice of Pocahontas' father in the big Pocahontas film. Mm -hmm. He makes big money now. He's a libertarian. I want you to watch this tape and listen to what he says about your freedom. So... Uh, what, firstly, let's go into a little bit of history. 
of who, who you are. You're a part of American history. Well, thank you. <laughs> I've been very fortunate, yes. I've struggled against uh, the United States government mm -hmm. almost all my adult life. Um, fighting for the freedom of my people. And then I came to a realization in the 80s when I met the Libertarian Party. And that was that if I want my people to be free, Americans have to be free. Mm -hmm. Yes. And one of the most beautiful things about the United States government, if you want to call it beauty, beauty to them, is that they are expert at colonizing people, mm -hmm. making you a part of the herd mentality. And you don't feel that you're a part of the herd mentality. They bombard you with the fact that you live in the greatest country on earth. And they celebrate it every 4th of July. But it's far from that, you know? It is a, it, it, it's a country that is quicksand. Mm -hmm. And individual liberties, which one, at one time was on firm ground, has been slowly and irretrievably slipping away in this quicksand and you're being sucked in and almost all americans are in denial the constitution and the bill of rights are fading. actually i shouldn't say all american those that vote are mm -hmm. in denial mm -hmm. i mean the demo publicans i mean the most beautiful thing though about um this government is that it's making the same mistake mistakes every empire has made mm -hmm. And the people I've now saw it exposed. The world has seen this country exposed for exactly what it is. And that is a fascist socialist government mm -hmm. that is beginning to run amok. Yeah, it's getting very, very extreme. We were talking before the show about the woman who was uh, dragged down to the police station and handcuffed in front of her kids for not wearing her seatbelt. Oh, my. And I then you had a story about someone, too? Yes, uh, another white woman in Farmington, uh, New Mexico, mm -hmm. where uh, the police raided the wrong house looking for a suspect. It was, happened to be her house. She objected for, for, vociferously, you know? Mm -hmm. And, in fact, um, resisted the police and everything. She was arrested for obstruction of justice. Mm. They were in the wrong house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a jury convicted her, and the state Supreme Court upheld it. That is amazing. Now, now, tell us a little bit about what it is about the Libertarian Party. Now, you said you, you came across the Libertarian Party policies and the doctrine of the Libertarian Party. What is it about the Libertarian Party that, that is so attractive to you, rather than the demo publics, as you like to put demo that? Demo-publicans. De that's it, demo-publicans. I know, what, I know what we like about it. What is it that you like about it, Russell? Well, uh, it's the only group of non-Indians I've met in the United States of America that think Indian. And it's all about, very simple. It's about uh, individual liberty with responsibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Yes. Responsible individual liberty. Very simple message. And it is the best message. You know, the first lesson of freedom is that you are free to be responsible. Duh. <laughs> and responsible for yourself. Exactly. Well, there you heard it. What did he say? Responsibility and freedom. Wasn't mm -hmm. that what Russell was saying? But he recognized, now this is an American Indian. I hope you people out there, you Chumash people out there are listening. This American Indian, this Sue, I think he's only part Sue. Uh, Russell Means, good friend of mine, by the way, uh, he's telling you he realized the American Indians cannot be free because the vast majority of Americans who are not Indians, who are not minority, are not free. And this clicked on him about 20-some years ago when he joined the Libertarian Party. Most of you didn't know that. The voice of Pocahontas, father, is a libertarian, and you never would have dreamed it. Clint Eastwood has said he's a libertarian. Will Wheaton, who's the young guy on the new generation Star Trek, he says I'm a libertarian. There are a lot of good people who are libertarians, and we all want to cut your taxes, make government nimble and efficient. And I 
would like to cut those top salaries off the supervisors, 10%. Mm -hmm. And I will do it would be great. if I get the opportunity. You elect me, and I'm going to embarrass them with this over and over. So we're coming to the end of this show. I wanted to talk about juries and how they're rigged. Not rigged by the defense, rigged by the prosecutors. And we're going to have this on next week's show, and we're going to talk about how juries get rigged. <laughs> juries get rigged so that even if you want to find the defendant not guilty, the judge will tell you you have to find him guilty. And the truth is, you are the judge of the facts as a jury person and also the law, and it's always been true. But most judges don't want you to know that. And we've got some interesting stuff for you. We'll play it for you next week. And I hope you show up February 7th at the Government Center, 7 to 9 p.m., run by the League of Women Voters. Oh, and also the Libertarian State Convention to be held at the Santa Maria Inn starting February 15th, 16th, and 17th. 17th and 18th. And 18th. That's right. With that, we have pretty much covered the ground. I want to show you one last little close-up here. If uh, This is a cartoon I thought was so funny. Enron stockholders are being shredded. Got that? They're being shredded. Same thing is happening to you taxpayers. You're being shredded. Well, that's about it for this week on Second Thought. I'm William Wagner, the guy in the white hat running for 5th District County Supervisor, and you're... I'm Susan King. Thanks for being with us. Don't miss it next week. <laughs> <laughs>